All right, before I get started with this weather update, I uh, just want to say we did have some breaks in the sky today, mainly this morning, early in the morning, and um, this evening, uh, some breaks in the sky, but by and large, it was mostly cloudy. Uh, but what I want to really talk about is an abuse of power by our county executive, Laura Kern, and, it, and it's a little off topic, but it really isn't because um, the, wet, the emergency alert system for Nassau County is supposed to alert people when there's severe weather uh, events that are going to be occurring in the county, whether it be flooding, whether it be a hurricane or tropical storm or a, a blizzard or something like that. Well, usually when I hear that, that is usually what it means. But that didn't happen. And I want to play this robocall, which was an abuse of power by our county executive, Laura Curran, because this is supposed to be reserved for weather emergencies and it is being abused. So you listen to this, and I'll get to the weather update. But I have this has to be said because this is an outrageous abuse of power and an abuse of a system that's designed to alert people in severe weather and only severe weather and because it's being wasted people aren't going to heed warnings when they really do uh, happen you ever heard of the boy who cried wolf well laura curran is the girl who cried wolf this is a notification from the nassau county office of emergency management hi i'm nassau county executive laura curran Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder and I, along with the NCPD Foundation and Hofstra University, will host a school safety forum on Tuesday, September 25th, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the David F. Mack Sports Exhibition Center at Hofstra University in Uniondale. The forum is open to students in grades 6 through college, also open to parents, teachers, school administrators, and the wider community. We will discuss our active shooter response program, our fight against opioid abuse, cyberbullying, and the Stop the Bleed program. We invite you to be a part of the conversation and a part of the solution. Thank you. Press 2 to replay this message. What? Oh, Press wait. 2 to replay <laughs> this message. <laughs> All right, so let's get this weather update started. We are going to look at the sad light first. And unfortunately, we didn't get much sunshine today. We were stuck in the clouds. Uh, and uh, even though it's nice and cool, we were stuck in the clouds today for the most part. A few breaks here and there, and it looked like to the north it was clear. But unfortunately, we never really got into that, and we were stuck in the clouds. Uh, and now we have rain coming and an increase in humidity too. So uh, right now Farmingdale, the low point, dew point still low, but it's going to start coming up I think in the next couple of hours. The dew point is 52, uh, and as you can see, we look, we had it mostly cloudy and overcast conditions all day, but it was a very cool day. It did not even hit 70 degrees. The high was 69. So a very cool, very comfortable day, and very windy, too. We've had uh, strong northeast winds at times gusting uh, up to 25 miles an hour. So let's take a look at the models here. We'll look at the GFS and see. Uh, what's coming our way? So we have this high over here that was parked over in the North New England giving us this nice cool flow, but now it's starting to move aside and this uh, stall front that's been to the south is finally going to start coming our way with uh, rain into tomorrow and it could be a uh, good heavy rain uh, according to the GFS. We'll take a look at how much rain we might get uh, throughout the day and then uh, it gets warm and humid after and then we have another front come through. It kind of gets hung up to the south a little bit on Thursday and Friday and then for the weekend we have a nice clear day uh, for Saturday and perhaps Sunday as well. Uh, and then you can see that there's definitely a pattern change. You can see where the fronts are coming through now. We don't have them stalling out and um, we have a huge high pressure there coming in for the weekend after next weekend so uh, again really nice and there's a tropical system showing up on there um, I'm gonna have to look at the tropics too actually so I'll have to look at that too um, alright so let's go ahead look at the hour uh, let's get a little closer to our area and show you the changes in the weather that will be going on so uh, we will take a look at the dew points the dew point forecast so you can see the humidity there coming in. Uh, so, still in the dry air right now, uh, but it's still going to start to get humid. You can see the humidity starting to go up. Probably by midnight, it's going to start rising. Uh, the dew point's going to start rising. Uh, and then they really start coming up by tomorrow morning with dew points in this, well into the mid and upper 60s. And you can see a really strong south flow uh, that's going to bring in the moisture with all, for all that rain. Uh, and then uh, Wednesday, you can see we also have extremely high dew points again, so it'll be pretty uncomfortable. 
but you can see here comes the front it's approaching but see it gets a little hung up on Thursday off to the south <clears throat> Uh, we'll have dew points in the, the 40s that day, though, so it'll be good, and it'll stay dry right through there. Maybe a little uptick in the humidity on Friday before the second front comes through, and it dries out pretty nicely for the weekend. So uh, that is uh, the, what the forecast looks like right now, so it looks pretty good. Uh, and uh, and then uh, it gets, as it gets humid again, though, October 1st into the October 2nd, a little return to the humidity there, uh, perhaps, but not as high. Uh, dew points in the mid-60s, so no... Hopefully no more 70 degree dew points, and then uh, another front comes through. Hopefully, yeah, we're going to get some into some of that humidity, and then another front comes through later on the Thursday. So that's this is the long range model, though. So you know, we're really I really just want to focus on the short range right now uh, in regards to. This. So we'll look at the clouds. You'll see we'll be stuck in the clouds uh, tomorrow for sure with all that rain. Uh, and same thing for Wednesday. Maybe a little few peaks of sun on Wednesday. The sun does come out. It could hit 80 degrees, and it could be pretty uncomfortable. But then here comes the front for Thursday. But see, it stalls out, so it won't clear out Thursday at all. Uh, it's it's Saturday that we should get into some clearing skies here. So Saturday, we should have some clear skies over us. Uh, and then maybe a few clouds. Uh, Sunday, maybe a few clouds. Uh, and then more clouds for the week uh, as we go into October. And... Uh, be clearing out again so it well, looks like we have a couple of chances for clear weather hopefully a chance to get to the pine barrens because that hasn't happened um all right so we're gonna look at temperatures let's look at the temperatures show you the change in the temperature so tomorrow it won't be all that warm uh, temperatures will probably be around 70 degrees it's wednesday that's going to heat up uh, if the sun comes out it could hit around 80 degrees on long island perhaps even the mid 80s for the poor folks there in tom's river in new jersey uh, and then it cools down again Thursday. Highs only around 70. So and then weekends cool, stays cool, and just show you it's going to stay cool. It shouldn't get hot again. I think that's it for the 80s. After after uh, Wednesday, I don't think we'll see 80 degrees again. I think that'll be it. So which will be good. That's fine by me. Let's go to the NAM and let's take a look at the precipitation. Uh, we're going to look at the uh, high resolution NAM to show you the rainfall. So let's go ahead. Wait, on 10 meter wind. Yeah, that's good. All right, so show you that rainfall coming. So uh, here you go. Uh, here comes the rain. Um, now, the NAM doesn't seem to be, uh, it's, it's, it's more scattered in nature on the NAM. Uh, but there could be some heavy downpours, perhaps morning hours to late morning. And then by the afternoon, it kind of just dies out. And then we have this other front coming here for Wednesday that might bring some thunderstorms to the area late Wednesday you know, probably more into you know around midnight probably late Wednesday night uh, could be a chance of some thunderstorms so how much rain are we gonna get what is the rainfall accumulation uh, for that let's take a look at the total accumulated precipitation let's see how much rain we could get tomorrow so uh, it, it, it seems like it has the heaviest rain to our north and Long Island generally a half an inch to three quarters of an inch uh, but that heavy rain is just to the north of us and this is this is the uh, NAM model I want to go to the GFS and see does GFS look like it yeah GFS is heavier with the rain uh, the GFS is giving us well over an inch of rain so we have differences in the models the GFS is saying heavier rain uh, and more slower moving so it could have a uh, well over an inch, probably an inch between one to two inches of rain. All right, and if we uh, actually put this back to uh, the radar, uh, so you'll see what I mean. So, well, this is simulated. Uh, so, but you can see the yellow that's over Long Island for most of the day. So, you know, you have two different scenarios, it seems. The NAM is more scattered in the rain, and the GFS is more of a solid... A batch of rain, but I, I trust the NAM better with predicting rainfall than the GFS. So I'm thinking the NAM will probably be, or we can somehow go in between the two solutions. But I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking it won't be raining all day, but it'll be more of a showery type of thing. But when it rains, it could be heavy uh, with all that moisture in the air. Um, I'm gonna look at another model, the H triple R. So let's look at that. Uh, let's see what that has. So H triple R, you can see it has some heavy rain. H triple R's has it more going on in the afternoon and the evening, uh, or particularly over Suffolk County. 
So and it continues that. So it it's very possible that that ring could linger around. I'm hoping it doesn't, but it might. Uh, one more model we'll look at with the rain, and that is the HDRPS. So let's do that one and see what the HDRPS has. So again, this is um, 11 a.m. noonish on Tuesday tomorrow. You can see the heavy rain there, uh, and I want to see what the rainfall amount for that is. So it just goes a little further. So let's take a look at that. So it's still continuing some rain. So it's going to be a rainy day tomorrow, unfortunately, and we've had a lot of rain lately. It's been awfully wet. We're going to continue that way. Oh, I want to... Oh, it doesn't... Uh, oops, I do apologize for that. I meant to do this. Yes, that's what I meant. Total accumulated precip. All right, so you can see, yeah, there's some... The HDR pass has some really heavy rain uh, over Nassau County, the city. Um, Connecticut uh, could be rainfall two to three inches. So there could be... A localized flooding tomorrow, a localized flash flooding with this heavy rain. Um, I do not think the Weather Service has us in a flash flood watch. They do not, but they might want to. And we also have coastal flood advisory in effect because of the east winds and the full moon, uh, which could cause some flooding along the south shore. Um, and speaking of that, let's look at the tropics. Uh, all right, so we have uh, Tropical Storm Leslie, Subtropical Storm Leslie, 40 mile an hour winds. Um, and then we have some chances for development as uh, some of these things too, broad area. So unlikely, uh, but Leslie is kind of interesting. Uh, and actually, I want to look more at the models when it comes to that, actually. Cause let's go back to the GFS and let's go to changing the regions. Let's change the regions to Western Atlantic, and let's change this back to this. All right, because there's something really unusual that go what was going on with Leslie. Yeah, there's Leslie right there. In fact, we need a wider view. So let me get a wider view. Need a wider North Atlantic. I need the entire North Atlantic because there's something really weird going on with Leslie, and I want to just point that out to you. So there's Leslie. You can see it's going to strengthen, and then it moves south again. Uh, very unusual, and it's just going to kind of sit around and eventually get spit out. Uh, and so some unusual things going on here. Some unusual things going on uh, that we we'll have to just keep an eye on. Uh, it doesn't look like anything would, will impact uh, the East Coast, but we do have to keep our eye on the tropics. We're still in tropical storm and hurricane season. Now, last thing I want to look at is the satellite, high-resolution satellite, and then I'll wrap up this weather update for you. Um, so, yeah, you can see this is Leslie right here, and then you can see this area over here, too. It looks like it could try to develop, too, into something. We have to keep our eye on that. And then we have this area, too. You can see that big cloud of dust. I think it's going to inhibit anything. Uh, but you can see some stuff is trying to get going. So, again, it bears watching. Here's the stalled front. Here's a nice clear air that Maine enjoyed. We didn't get. There's a little smoke over there. Uh, and uh, I don't know where that smoke is coming from. I have no idea uh, because I don't see anything going over here. Uh, but still some fires out west. Not as much activity as there was before, but definitely is some activity. So that's going to conclude this weather update. Uh, take care and uh, try to stay dry tomorrow. I think it's going to be a wet one. Thank you for watching.